Uh, born and raised in Peru. I came to the United States 16 years ago, so when I was 14. Um, high school, I graduated from two years of college, uh, mid-time working in restaurant business, and who knew that uh, I was going to find my passion doing dishes. Pretty much, that's how everything started. Sixteen years ago, my dad brought us over from Peru, and it was an eye-opener to see what he was doing for a living. Nothing wrong with what he was doing, but again, it was a slap in the face because I thought the United States was just like the movies, you know, New York, everybody was the owner or something. Well, I didn't realize that coming from a third world country, you don't have the privilege to, to choose jobs. You get what you get. And in my, in my dad's situation was a dishwasher. So I started by helping, helping him out on the weekends, um, not being on payroll, just giving him a hand. And I used that little experience to get my actually paid first job that was in Massachusetts, in West Virginia, Massachusetts. And that's how everything started. I started doing dishes. My station was right across the, the, the chef's line. And I thought, I saw everything coming to life there. I saw people screaming, chefs yelling, knives being thrown, people burning their hands just so they can come out with a dish out of nowhere and bring it to the table. But most interesting is that people will come back for the same dish. So it was like, for me it was magic. It was an orchestra, you know, the chef directing the whole thing and people putting together the best they could to, to make all the people happy. And, and that for me was a, a wow. That for me was like, that's what I want to do eventually. Two things. Two years after my first job, my dad I was already a line cook. My my chef and this restaurant was a still a corporation. He came in and he told me, You got two weeks to either quit or I will fire you. You have a lot of raw talent. Don't waste it in the corporate. Go to little places and and learn from chefs, learn from little recipes, from homemade stuff. That's going to make you better. So the last day I worked in that restaurant, as I'm walking out, I turned around and I saw the name on the door of the Permiti, the owner. And I said to myself, one of these days I'm going to have my name on the door that says Julio Cancho Permiti. And, and I think that is what drove me to, to go back and forth from hell, learning from badass, mean chefs, uh, the, the way it's supposed to be done. You know? In this industry, Carlos, you always learn something. Always, you're always learning. So whether it's a good thing that you can, you want to improve, or it's a bad thing that you know you're never gonna do it, you're still learning that. So yes, I learned from the really bad places that I worked to the high-end restaurants that I have the pleasure of working for, and, and everything from how to grab a knife to how to play a dish to how to communicate with people and how to treat employees. Like everything came out to one thing, and I think really. My main struggle was to make everything right. As, as a human, you're going to fail and you're going to make mistakes. As a me, as a Julio, I always wanted to do the thing to the team, perfect, even better than perfect. So a lot of times I will mess up a recipe and I have to start again and start again and I have always that tension and that, that uh, being afraid of being fired over something stupid. So that is probably was my biggest fear and my biggest push to be better. Uh, but that's probably the most, the, the thing that I struggled the most with was just making sure that things were up to par, up to their standards. Again, this is what I do for a living. It's, it's my passion.
Uh, I wouldn't give this up long ago if this just wouldn't be something else that I wanted to do. There's stress involved, there's, there's a lot of non-sleeping, there's a lot of waking up in the middle of the night thinking, did I forget to do this, did I forget to do that? So yeah, those are little things that complement my passion. That's what people don't get sometimes. You deserve 100% of what you're paying. So if I'm just gonna give you a plate of food that at 70%, I'm still in 30% from your pocket, and that is not fair to you. So I wanna give you what you deserve, I wanna give you what you're paying, and that's food including, and, and drinks and atmospheres, and, and how cool people are with you and whatnot. Every table is the best dish I ever made for anybody in my life. So that is the passion that comes here. I don't think it was enough. I think Harford is it's a beast of its own. I think Harford has problems and problems that needs to be fixed. Not just Harford, don't get me wrong. I think Connecticut itself has biggest problems. Back then, having a family, having my kid, living in a house, and working one job probably 16 hour days, still wasn't, you know, uh, again, it's not because my boss was an ass or it's not because I didn't want to put 100% of myself into that place, it's just the economy itself was really bad. Um, yeah, there's places that pay you well, but again, I didn't have the privilege to go to a medical school or a lawyer school, you know, a law firm or whatever. Um, I'm just doing what I know to do the best, and in this industry, especially, you gotta hustle for the, what you want, and that's that's what I did, and that's probably what I still do. You know, hustling to get what I want. Maybe it's not economically anymore, but you're still fighting against everything you have, so you can reach that goal. One of my breaks from the kitchen, I got a job at CNS, a warehouse. Back then, they used to pay you by box. The more boxes you pick up, the more money you get. And, and it was a good paycheck. It was a really good paycheck. But it wasn't mine. It wasn't my calling. Yeah, the money was great, but I wasn't happy. I needed the, the flames. I needed the screaming, the cooking, the, 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 the prepping. Was that in that was in Winslow Locks. Quite a distance. Yeah, it was quite a distance. Uh, but in Hartford itself, I never got the chance to actually explore. Yeah, explore a different industry other than the than kitchen. Well, before I answer that, I think people need to be a little responsible. Yeah. You don't have a job, but yeah, let's, let's get a family together kind of thing, you know? It's not fair to blame, it goes both sides. Yeah, economy sucks, but at the same time, it's not fair to blame economy because you never push yourself to be something and now you have to take care of two kids and one more person kind of thing, you know? So, so right now, yes, I think Hartford, economy-wise, got a little better. I think there's more industry and there's more demands for, in this case, cooks, chefs, prep, dish, whatever. And I think that because the economy got a little better and there's more people exploring the food industry, there's more income, therefore there's a little more money that they can pay employees. As long as they deserve it, of course. Is it fair money at the end of the week to, to support a family? By itself? No. I think. But if you do a teamwork between the family, it might be enough. You know, I, I don't know, maybe I'm maybe talking nonsense right now, but there was a time in my life, in my career, that I was living paycheck to two days before paycheck. And that wasn't cool because, again, you want to have that freedom of being able to bring your kid to Chuck E. Cheese, for God's sakes, you know, and, and and you can because you don't have that extra money. So now I think I got a little better. 
Maybe instead of Chuck E. Cheese, you bring it to freaking, uh, what's it called, the one that just opened in Manchester, Dave and Busters, you know? But uh, it's all about how you carry yourself, and it's all about how good of a work, uh, of a job you do, you know, and how good you let people know that you're able to do something better than what they were expecting you to do. Well, you have that here that you have managed to build however here in your restaurant. A different reality as well. Yes. Try to be more fair. Yes, that's the thing. Um, I will not pay you 20 bucks just to come in the door and tell me that you're the biggest chef ever. Um, but, um, but at the same time, I want to know what you have on you that you can give me so I can give you something back. It's all about being fair. Yes, it is. It is great. It is good. It's challenging, but never give up on 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 your goals. When you have a dream, and this is what I was told long ago. Yes, you have a dream right now of opening a restaurant. Well, change that into a goal. A dream. You wake up and the dream is gone, and you're never gonna dream it again. So set yourself a goal and this amount of time you're going to make something and make it. Because if you're not, then you just become a failure. And that stuck to me until now. Every time I set a goal, I have to make it. I don't care what I do, how I do it. If I sleep, if I don't sleep, if I spend here 24 hours cooking the best slow short rim, whatever. You still a goal to, to you, you still set a goal and you have to, to to make it happen. So yes, it is difficult. It is hard. Owning a restaurant, owning a business is not. All right, here's my restaurant. See you guys never. I'm gonna enjoy my life somewhere else. But it's well worth it. At least for me, it's well worth it. Just to to cook on a Friday night tired, missing my family, but yet I see a table that licking the fork because the food was really good, that for me made it. That for me was like, okay, I'm good to go for tomorrow. I'm gonna do it again.